Hey guys, got a little bit of a running stream of thought going on right now, and it has to do with kind of the writing landscape of television and movies. Um, obviously, we always try, or at least filmmakers try, to have some kind of current relevance, or whether it be political, economical, um, something about uh, history, or any sort of current day out aspect to life into their films sometimes now when it is part of that demographic that kind of structure but it's also been bleeding into a lot of fantasy genres sci-fi actual fantasy there's these aspects of current day life that are put in even if they don't really make sense even if they're more so for the political message than the actual story itself and it's very much kind of imploding in on itself. And some of these screenwriters are kind of going, oh, what do you mean? Like, these are just trolls and tra uh, traitors and trolls and whatnot. And maybe in like a small demographic, that is true. But not on the whole. There is much more of a vocal element to film and television and critique and criticism. But when you immediately have any kind of disagreement, you are put into a box with people who are extremely against something, almost to a hateful degree, whether they are justified or being a dick about it. Even if you have a small issue, you get put into that. That really kind of came about with The Last Jedi. I had issues with that movie. I had problems. I didn't think it was the worst thing to ever come out ever, but I was being categorized with those people. I was being put into that group by people who absolutely loved it. And there were people who liked it but also had issues with it, but because they liked it more than they disliked it, they were getting put into the groups who were absolutely loving that. The reason why I'm kind of going on this tangent is the whole idea of movies was escapism. That was the idea of cinema for a long time ago, taking you to a different place, taking you out of your current day living arrangement and just putting you somewhere out of body, out of mind for an hour to two hours to three hours. People didn't go and see the original Star Wars movie back in 1977 because they wanted political aspects in that film, or they wanted to see how it was dealing with anything that was going on. The world was such a shitty place at that time. You had the Vietnam War going on. You had a ton of uh, political upheaval and black ops stuff and just dirty, dirty backroom door stuff happening. And uh, then you also had the cynical 70s in terms of cinema. Like, depressing movies were coming out by the train load in the 70s. Not that they weren't bad. There actually are a few in my shelf here that I would count for the cynical 70s um, that are very, very good, but it's not like I'm going to put uh, a woman under the influence on. Like That movie will depress the absolute shit out of you. No, people went and saw Star Wars for escapism, literally in the opening of the film, in a galaxy far, far away. That idea of irrelevance from the current day aspects is something that people went to watch movies for. It's what we watch television for, for the most part, unless you're watching cop beat shows and medical dramas and whatnot. But my two big kind of aspects right now are Rings of Power and The Witcher. Now, the Rings of Power, I still have absolutely no idea how the two writers um, got their job, considering if you look up them on IMDb, they have no prior big experience. They were ghostwriters for Star Trek Three, And under, under, under all that, they were J.J.'s bootlickers for a long time. He was the one who suggested them to Jeffrey Bezos. And as the story supposedly goes, they came into the writers' meeting and spoke a bit of Elvish to Jeffrey. And Jeffrey was really like, oh, yeah, these guys are it. Now, obviously, that's kind of uh, probably a little bit over-exaggerated. But the amount of interviews they've been doing the amount of damage control they've been doing both before during and especially after the show has come out the first season has come out is exponential these guys have it feels like they've put more effort into these interviews into this damage control than they have to the actual show and the writing they keep on saying that, oh, we wanted Sauron to be hiding in plain sight. Yet everyone who was watching this show 
anyone who actually was like had put more than I don't know five minutes of thought to it knew that Halbrand was going to be Sauron. I thought that at first he might be a witch king or something because I was like, no, it can't be that easy. But lo and behold, and then for the dialogue, the writing, all of it was just so less in stature, less in quality, definitely less in academic feel than that of Tolkien. You would all of a sudden just get these contrasts when they would take lines verbatim from the books and put them in the show, even if some of them didn't make sense. And all of a sudden, the writing quality would just like do this little tick. And these guys are now doing more and more interviews talking about why they did these decisions, what this actually means, what are the, what's going to happen for season two. But a lot of it has been about just the decisions they made with how the first season went about and then why they did them and their justifying explanations as to why. And that's a lot of what J.J. would do when J.J. made his movies, especially for... The Star Trek films for Force Awakens. That was all we were doing. It just kept on asking questions after question after question. Lord of the Rings is not supposed to be that. That's not what Tolkien wrote these stories are, uh, as. They weren't mystery box writing. And the fact that they're trying to do it at a discount Wal- Walmart brand level is a little bit insulting. Um, why I'm kind of referring to these guys is i know a lot of people a few people well like meh i know a lot of people who are writers out here in vancouver i know a few who are very good writers out here and these guys they struggle they break their backs they write and 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 nothing comes around they submit their scripts and they maybe get a little far in contests and in uh, judgments. Um, Some of them are really, really, really good, and they never get that up end. But then you see people like the two writers for uh, Amazon's Rings of Power, and then also the writers who apparently don't like the source material of The Witcher getting jobs left and right. Even the guy who wrote Obi-Wan, who wrote army of the dead and that was apparently his credential that that was all the credential he needed to write about one of the most beloved characters in star wars history a return that so many people had been dying for begging for and this schmuck got to write it how does this happen? How does Hollywood still allow people who clearly are not the right people for the job to get these jobs? How do they get the golden ticket? Now, obviously, it, it, it does come down to people who you know. That's the film industry in a nutshell. You do need to know people. And I get that. Is that fair? No. But you do have to sell yourself. You do have to be able to explain and articulate yourself in a way that can get you into that doorway into that room put your foot in that door but unfortunately there are some who are just i don't know they're just so much better at it than others even if their skill is actually not worth it and i find that's one of the most unfair things about writing in in the not just writing but the film industry in general is if you can shit talk really well, it will get you so much further than actually being good at your job will in nine times out of ten. I know some people in uh, a show that I've worked on who are absolute numbskulls, like not good at what they do, but they have either kissed ass well enough or yeah, pretty much just kissed ass well enough to get higher positions also in combination with that the industry out here in vancouver is exploding it is literally at the brim it's frothing over so there's a ton of positions being filled in by people who do not have the experience for it but there's not enough people to go around so that's kind of where you wish it was like that for writers but it's not it's a lot of these writers who just don't have the actual experience to do so but they get the job anyways like i i I keep waiting every day i wake up i type in 
Witcher showrunner response because I am waiting for her to explain why things fell apart with Henry considering he was so hell-bent, so focused and so forthcoming with that I want to be a part of this show for as long as it can just so long as you guys respect the stories and do good stories and they cocked it up after three seasons they still have apparently four more to go so what happened the only person outside of uh the guy who's the lead writer for x-men 97 and henry uh that's talked about it is one of the producers one of the polish producers and he had some kind of obscure thing that like oh gerald can be like the new james bond that he is one of the polish producers and I don't know. I think he was just trying to write it in a way, but his excuse has been very much so uh, cast aside because Geralt is the same character. Like, this is not James Bond. James Bond is, oh, if anything, short stories with a character that's interchangeable because of how he's portrayed throughout the films and throughout history. Geralt's literally on his third outing, and we're already replacing him. I don't know. It's a very strange situation. Well, what do you guys think? How do you feel about this state of writers and the fact that there are so many people who have great talent, who have exceptional talent, and keep on getting passed aside for these people who apparently can walk the walk but cannot talk the talk, whether it's having very little, very lacking experience with writing television shows are dislike the source material entirely and instead of learning how to adapt their writing style and kind of making it you know working with this material working against your displeasure to try and make a good story no apparently they think that they know better than the right the the source material and the fans who enjoy that source material and they'll write it in a way that completely undermines the actual fan base halo is a massive example of that i enjoyed a little bit of the show i thought that the props team and the sound department were the most loyal people in that entire department of the entire creation of that show somehow the props were the most <laughs> were the most authentic and respectful to the source material but aside from that that was it the writing was completely different the lead actor had never played a goddamn halo game and i remember when he said that it made me instantly think of um mark Wahlberg saying that he wasn't going to play max Payne for the max Payne movie because like i don't need to play a video game to play a character and it's like man you'll read a book if you're watching a you know if you're going to make a movie about a book you should at least read the book god damn don't even read the book at least you know audio book it or something or for god forbid have a big uh max Payne fan explain to you what it is one of my favorite stories about a character or an actor getting inspiration for a character is john barenthal's um his introduction to the punisher he walked into I think this is, how does it go? I believe he had just been announced that he was going to play the Punisher. It was like kind of on the table. And he walked into a comic book shop and he explained to the guy about it. And the guy said, all right, you need to read these. And he late, he went around the store and he grabbed the best Punisher stories. Obviously, Welcome Back Frank was one of them. Um, and he's like, these are the stories you need to read you, to understand the character you are playing. And Barenthal took all of those comics home and he read them. And he understood it. And that is, that's respect. That's respect done correctly when you're doing source material. Um, uh, another thing that I can think of is some people think they can write like this, but I only really know a couple of writers who can, one of them being Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan has proven that he can take a source material, completely write it in a totally different means than that of the original material, yet still be incredibly respectful to the original material. Uh, I'm talking about The Haunting of Hill House. Not at all like the book, yet at the same time, still so much. Uh, Bly Manor, um, that's uh, The Turn in the Screw, I believe it's based on one of the stories. It's been regarded, actually. It was regarded as one of the better horror stories of uh, the earlier centuries. 
of the early 19th century but after a while it just like a lot of people just criticize it now like it's not a good story if you want an example of it oh god finn wolf wolfhard did the turn the turning or something he did it at the in the beginning of the year the same year that bly manor came out and that was based on the same source material and it was awful and it's because the story is awful and then he did uh, he's doing he just did the midnight club which i will now be very interested to read the book and see how much different it is from the show but yet at the same time how similar the show was to the material but yeah those are my thoughts i just wanted to have a little bit of a talk before while i was away i'm in mexico right now but i figured you guys you know i just have this running stream of consciousness Again, I'm still playing with the lights here. I know that having a hat on is not exactly the best, but if I take the hat off, I look like some sort of, I don't know, discount of that history guy. And I, I like wearing hats, so I, I don't know, maybe I have to have an underlight or something. But anyways, guys, those are my thoughts. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a running stream of consciousness. Uh, say that I'm, I'm still kicking around, even though I'm not here. Hope you guys are enjoying your day. Hope you guys are enjoying uh, things going on with you. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. And uh, yeah, give me your guys' thoughts of what you think it is. Do, do Am I speaking sense? Am I kind of out of my mind talking about this? Or do you know where I'm coming from? Anyways, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, see you guys next time.